Prey Moon Crash. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words of the developer. In Prey Moon Crash, Transtar's secret moon base stopped transmitting shortly after the events of Prey. Now Peter, a hacker stationed aboard a spy satellite tasked with intercepting Transtar communications, must find out why. Trapped and under a ruthless contract with Kazma Corp, Peter's only hope of ever seeing his family again is uncovering the moon base's lost secrets. So what is Moon Crush? Well, it's a DLC for Prey and it costs $12.99. Uh, if you don't own Prey, you have to have Prey to play it, it's a DLC. If you don't own Prey, you can buy a, a digital deluxe uh, for, I think it's £30, and you get this with it. So essentially, you're only paying £10 for this DLC. If you already own Prey, then the DLC is £12.99. So if you're a loyal customer and you bought Prey when it first came out, you get charged more for the DLC. Thanks, Bethesda. Anyway, what is the DLC? How does it work? What is it? What is it? What is it? Well, it makes you pray, play, play, pray. It makes you play, pray in a way you would never play, pray, if you know what I'm saying. Prey was a very kind of atmospheric first person shooter where you were on an adventure, you were exploring, and you were rewarded heavily, heavily rewarded for exploring. In this game, you are running around like a blue ass fly trying to escape off the planet. You see, you play an operator who goes into a VR simulation, this isn't a VR game, uh, in, into a simulation and has to escape the planet. Now he has to do that with five crew members. You have to find them first to unlock them. You start off with one and then you have to unlock the others and then you have to find a way out of the actual planet. There's five different ways that you can leave and you have to find them. The very first one's easy uh, but the others are pretty difficult and a lot of them require multiple jobs to be done before you can actually escape. So you have to work the puzzles out. While you're doing that, there will be random monsters spawning at specific areas of the game. You don't know what the monsters is going to be and they are different every time. If your guy dies while you're trying to escape, you then get the next character that you've unlocked to carry on. Now, to make things even worse, you have a threat. It's, it's kind of a, co a corrosion level. It starts off at 1 and goes all the way to 5 and you can see it in the top right corner of the screen. This is a timer that constantly keeps going up. When the bar fills, it goes to corrosion level 2. When that fills, it goes to corrosion level 3. And what this means is that I can't read because it's actually corruption level, not corrosion level. What that does is each level that it goes up, the monsters become tougher and nastier. And there's a whole host of monsters, including new ones into this DLC. There's this shark thing that is blind, but flies around under the surface a bit like that film tremors and if you stand on the surface other than a rock it will come for you and it is lethally hard to kill and lethally lethally lethal when all your guys 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 are dead you start the simulation again however 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 certain things that you find and unlock such as plans that you find to, uh, for fabricators you will keep so you don't have to unlock them again and every mimic or monster that you killed every uh, bit of quest that you did and i'll come to the quests in a second will give you money and you can buy shit good shit to go in on your second run this is the rogue the roguelike element of the game so you can buy ammo you can buy guns you can buy um grenades and things like that you can buy neuro mods you can buy all sorts but you have to unlock them by finding them first in the game so the more you play the game the more stuff you can buy when you reset it and play it again making your run a little bit easier also you're learning the maps as well you're learning how to escape so far i've unlocked three different ways to escape but it's took us quite a while to do that but it's been great fun doing it there is side quests as well if you've got the balls to do them uh, they're not really deep it's just like a few emails Emails, go and find this person there this person here find out how this person died go and steal this person's uh, chip out of his brain and things like that but to be honest with you I've spent most of my time just trying to work out how to freaking escape and unlock the other characters it's really really challenging but at the same time it is great fun it makes you play the game completely different to what you would normally do you're running around all over the place trying to escape and then you'll come across a gate that's locked it's a Typhon gate and it will only open if there's no enemies nearby but if you carry an EMP grenade you can just 
get through and it's on edge of the seat stuff this you are constantly feeling that you've been chased and there's mimics hiding all over the place it's terrific it does get a little bit repetitive but bethesda have addressed that a little bit with a lot of the tedious things you'll do on your first run you don't ever have to do them again when you're doing other runs after that which is brilliant because some of the things that you have to do on the first run can get a little bit tedious it has a shit ton of weapons it's got new new weapons in there as well you've got a goo, a goo grenade i think there's two new weapons two new monsters from what i've what i've uh, read the object of the game is to is to find all the five different ways to escape but do the whole thing in one go with all five members and each member has to go through a different escape place rather than all going through the same one obviously if you go through an escape pod on one of them that escape pod's gone so you have to find another way and the corruption level lasts throughout all characters so if you do your first character and he's dilly dallying and it's corruption level two by the time he escapes the next guy that goes out will start at corruption level two. It just kind of the game. It's one game, if you if you know what I'm saying. So you haven't got to hang around with your with your early characters. So learning the map is crucial. Learning exactly what you need to do to um, escape is crucial, and learning what order is, is to escape is going to be crucial as well. Uh, there's certain things you have to carry in place into certain containers in order to escape and there's certain places on the map i'm trying not to spoil anything for you where you can get all that stuff so it's it's all about planning it's really well thought out the amount of work that must have gone into making this uh, is just great it's made the game fantastic prey was my game of the year and i think it was 2017 justifiably so and this is a really good dlc for that game it is just well worth a buy well worth the 12.99 it is terrific fun and uh, if you don't own Prey and you like first-person shooters, go and get it because you're missing out big time on a terrific exploration game. And this DLC lets you play it in a completely different way, which is great fun. So there you go. Prey Moon Crash is definitely worth a buy. 